Thanks for watching Living Local. So today is for all of you crime and investigative buffs. We are meeting with ex-FBI special agent Jim Furry. Oh, there's something so real about living local. About the people and the places where we live. Just look at all the reasons why we call this home. And I love living local. I'm living local cause it's where So today I am with Jim Furry and I'm super excited learning about him. Look, look, it's a real <laughs> FBI badge. So what would you say whenever you went to a place and you would hold this up? I would, I would say FBI. FBI. Just FBI. Do what I say. I, <laughs> can I talk to you? Or it depends on what I was going to see the person for. You know? What was people's reaction when you were like, hey, I'm an FBI? Were they like, oh gosh, do whatever you want? Yeah. <laughs> So, mostly quiet until they would ask, you know, uh, why are you here? Right. What are you, what are you talking to me for? What sure. do you want to talk to me for? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just so I'm so interested to get into your story, Jim. And sure. And um, you know, because we have you living here in Myrtle Beach. Who would have known? I'm glad we were able to dig you out of here. <laughs> but um, I know we have a book that you've written that we'll kind of chat with, um, chat about in a little bit. But I wanted to kind of go over your journey of how you even became an FBI agent. Sure, sure. My uncle was an FBI agent, so he called me back up and said, look, I can't, I can't help you as a special agent. You have to earn that on your own. But he says, I'll get you a, a, a administrative job in Washington, D.C. if you want to move. He, he got my wife a job. We both went as, wow. as clerks in the, in the uh, FBI. So and, she did it too? Yeah until she got pregnant with our twin boys. But this job opened up and I, that I started my book here um, doing uh, surveillance. It was a non-agent, but it was, uh, it was kind of a, uh, like a paralegal, but a kind of uh, semi-professional. And they were looking for college people that wanted to become agents to do this kind of thing. I went DC to New Orleans, back to DC, out to Springfield, Illinois, to Newark, and then once I got to Newark, I couldn't get out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where you were doing the stuff you were just the... I was doing uh, mostly La Cosa Nostra, mob, and then when I became a supervisor, I did crimes against children in wow. the World Trade Center, 9-11, I did that. FBI agents have, uh, it's very stressful, it's very a lot of pressure, and um, you work a lot of long hours, so as a result, a lot of agents that retire have health problems and I and I thought to myself you know if I die early my my seven grandchildren they're not going to know what Pappy did when he was in the FBI so I said I'm going to write a book and it says that you were a farm boy yeah. in Pennsylvania yeah. and then you were conducting foreign counterintelligence surveillance in the 70s yep. and then training in Quantico um, to investigating the, the mafia. I mean, something like the mafia, yeah. is that was that is that nerve-wracking to kind of make an arrest on someone like that? Uh, sometimes, yeah. it can be. You never worried about your safety? No, not really. No? You know, they, they, you know, the, the mob kind of had this unspoken, if they, if they hurt an FBI agent, they were done because the, the FBI would go after them with as many agents as it took. Well, I, you know, <laughs> I wish we could just sit here and kind of chat all day about all the different stuff you've done. I'm sure you just have a million stories in here, but, um, but that's what people have to buy the book for then, huh? That's right, that's right. Well, thanks so much, Jim, for kind of taking the time to, to talk about this book and, you know, and thanks for your service. Oh. I mean, 30 years, right? Yeah, thir actually 31 and a half. That's, a, that's insane. And what made you decide to retire here in Myrtle Beach? Uh, I was doing those consulting jobs all over the country, and in 2008, Ann, my wife, said, I'm not shoveling snow anymore. We're <laughs> going someplace where we don't have to shovel snow. That's, I feel I like said, that's the most common response, is I take said, me somewhere warm. Where would you like to go, honey? And she said, Myrtle Beach. So she got to, she got to have the final say. <laughs> yeah. After yeah. following you around for all those years, she was kind of like, all right, you follow me to Myrtle Beach. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, everybody, make sure you go out and you find this book, and you can learn all about Jim, whose name is James on the, on the book, and all about his story and all about the different experiences, and you can get the full thing rather than just our, 
our little teaser here for you. But thanks so much again, Jim, oh. for meeting with us today. That was super interesting. It was and great meeting with you. All right, everybody. Well, we'll be right back. Thanks for watching Living Local.